stand up real quick. Yeah. There we go. See, because this is this is what I want at the end of the presentation. This is one of those great things. Everyone stands up and claps at the end, but there's a couple spots during this as well that I'm gonna need your guys' help. So let's practice real quick. Let's practice an ooh together. Ooh. Yeah, right? Everybody need that. Let's practice an ah. If for some reason during this presentation you hear me say a billion dollars, you're going to say, what? <laughs> yeah, right? Alright, have a seat. Have a seat. Let's get into this. So we just talked about all the technology. We just heard about all these different things of from not being in a digital age to being in a digital age. And I want to tell you guys about this simple concept of where building websites has taken me in life. My name is Joe Martin, I live in Chicago, I'm an entrepreneur, and we're going to start this off actually doing a little bit of time travel. So I'm going to, I'm going to take you guys back in time here. Ooh, yeah, see, you guys get it. You get it. I still keep needing to change this photo out actually, but this is, this is embarrassing. This is 12 year old Joe Martin, so we're going way back in time here now, and we're going to bring you guys all the way up. Because about four years after this, I didn't want to be a nerdy little kid. And I decided that I thought one thing that I could do would be to start playing guitar. Yes, there it is, we got claps going on. And so, I created the band. And at 16 years old, I had my dream. My dream was to be a rock star. That was going to be it. I wanted to play Warped Tour. I wanted to play down in Austin and South by Southwest. I wanted to play Summerfest. This, this is what I was going to do. This was my dream. And at 17 years old, I graduated, and I started working for the village of Schiller Park. I worked for the municipal department, which means that every morning at 7 a.m., you get to go out with your little stick and pick up trash alone for 30 minutes, while everyone else, who was a union employee at the time, gets to sit in the break room, have their donuts, have their coffee, while you're out there. Picking up trash. Let me demonstrate one more time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was it. That was, a, that was a nice little time in life. Uh, and the best part was, when you worked in the village, you also got these really great worn shirts. So, at least I looked like a convict while I was doing it. So, this was great. But I kept telling myself that it's okay. Like, I'm just doing this for now. For right now, I'm picking up trash, but I'm gonna be a rock star. So it's okay. And so I kept playing, and I kept pushing along with my band, because that was a dream, and, and we go after our dreams. We're not going to sit there and not go after our dreams, and this was mine. Everyone else might have different ones, but I was going to make this one happen. And I got to the point where I was actually able to start touring and play around the U.S. I got to get the headline of Metro. I got to play House of Blues. I got to do all these really great things that I wanted to do in life, including shooting music videos and making connections all across the U.S. with venues and bands. And at 20 years old, I was doing this on the side while also working for a company called the American Society of Safety Engineers. I got to leave public works in this. This was my first big boy job. I had a desk, I had a computer, I had a phone. People could call me in the middle of the day. It was glorious. But what, what they didn't tell you is that when you go to tell people that you have a job at a place and you're a designer and your email address is jmartin at assy.org <laughs> everybody wants to know what you do everybody wants to know what this is and this was my title this was, I was a little embarrassed of it I didn't let it tell people where I worked for a long time but this was it and from going from picking up trash all I had to do at this great big boy job, making money, having a desk, having a computer, all I needed to do was not mess it up. <laughs> mess it up. All I wanted to do was put a couple of shows on the website real quick. I started learning how to code because I thought if my band had a really cool website, that maybe we'd get more fans. And so I started teaching myself HTML and CSS to learn how to do these things. And then one day I'm sitting there at my desk and I'm like, I'll just do a couple of shows on here real quick. And I pulled it up and I'm putting it in. And then it's the director of the department standing over my shoulder who walked in and just looks over and goes, what are you doing? That's not what I asked you to work on. And 
was like, oh, well, this is where I get fired. This is where I get fired, isn't it? And she actually ended up giving me a position in the web department and said, we actually didn't know you could code. We have a new position to open. And I was like, oh, okay, yes, yeah, I'll do whatever. I just, I really like making money and having a desk and having a computer and my own phone that people can call me on. And so I kept working there. And I realized that in learning how to build a website, that this was our band's website. We were called PGS, we played around Chicago, we got to do all our stuff. But they had me start building websites for over 150 chapters that they had around the US. And so I started getting more practice doing this with the band. And we kept playing and I was learning web and playing shows and getting bigger. And it's kind of messed up now to think about it that there was a point in time when Fall Out Boy actually opened for us. This was ages ago. But I could feel, I thought Chicago was gonna have a big band coming out at the time. I was positive it was going to be us, but it wasn't. It was, it was other bands that we played with who went on to actually have the rock stardom and play on MTV and do all these amazing things. And at 24 years old, I had to give up. I gave up on the dream. I, I chased it for so long with this idea of being a rock star, and it just it didn't hit. And it was the first time in my life that I felt like I failed. And that everything, all the practice, all the shows, everything I did ended up accumulating to what felt like nothing. And I lost my dream. I lost the dream of being a rock star, that I wouldn't get to play Summerfest. I wouldn't get to go on work tour. And I had to let it all go. And I had this job, and that's where I realized that even with all this falling apart, something still came out of it, is that I knew how to code websites. I could, I could build, I could do something. I still had a skill. I could be using for a lot of this. And so I went back to school, I went back to college at 25 years old. And I went to the Art Institute. And now my dream changed, and I had a new dream. Now the dream was, I thought it'd be really cool to actually make money building websites. That'd be a cool thing if someone actually pay me to build them a website. And I started learning this simple little concept in college as well. And that I could pay friends 40 bucks an hour. I could charge a client 80 bucks an hour. And by the time my friend did the work, there was just 40 bucks hanging out for me to have. This was incredible. Someone else could do the work and I could make money. This concept was completely foreign to me. And so I started a company. Not that hard, it turns out. You can just go online and Google how to create a company at the time. And so I launched a business called Telegraphics. And I actually pulled in a friend that I went to high school with. Both of us had gone to East Leiden. We kept in contact. We both dated the same girl. That was kind of weird, but <laughs> irrelevant. Irrelevant. That's a good time for you. I heard one of you out there. And the dream. The dream started to change again. Because while I wanted to have this dream of building websites, this, this is the ultimate dream. This was it. Could I make money without actually working? I wanted to find out that this wasn't really feasible. So I tweaked the dream a little bit. Just make money without working a lot. I don't, I don't want to work all the time. I don't want work to rule my life. I want, to, I want to spend time with family and friends and travel and do what I want to do. And so I went to the corporate world. And I started off with a job at a place called cars.com. Super corporate. Left there, went to a company called Field Glass. And Field Glass had this cool little thing called stock options. Are you guys, do you guys know what stock options are? Raise your hand if you do. And a couple of them. What is it? Did you just raise your hand not knowing? That's good, I like that. <laughs> I appreciate that. Stock options means that if this company were to ever sell, I would get a percentage of what they sell for. So if they were to sell for a million dollars, I would get a piece what? of that. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Someone corrected him. Someone corrected him. Jumping the gun. But if they sold, I would actually get a piece of it. And all I had to do was not mess it up. I got fired. <laughs> after, after about two years, this is the uh, text message that I sent to my family when I got fired that day. It just says, just got fired. Which, well, this is 10 years ago. Yes, yeah, uh, this is 10 years ago now that I got fired from that job. And 
now for the second time in my life, this, this happened again. Another, another fail just slapping me in the face. Uh, and every time this started to happen, I just kind of looked around, like, what do I have? And this idea of, I woke up here, right? I woke up today. I woke up on this timeline. I know what I know. I know what I can do. What do I have available to me that I can do something with? And I had my own company still. I still had my, my telegraphics company. So I rebranded. I started, started putting some stuff together. And something else happened after this. Because three months after I got fired, something that 16-year-old Joe did all of a sudden resurfaced. And a friend of mine who played in another band at the time actually told me how he was joining a new band. And they were going out on tour. And he asked me if I wanted to actually come out, play guitar, and join them on tour. And so five years after I'd given up on my dream of being in a band and being that rock star, I got to play work tour. I got to play Summerfest. I got to play South by Southwest. seeing it when we're, when we're in it. And if we look at time, if we stretch out time, we don't know when things are going to happen. We don't know where you guys are going to be five, ten years from now. The same way that when that stuff fell apart, I didn't know how it would transition. I didn't know what it would come back around. But what was important was I just kept going after my dream. And the band is actually still around today. Uh, I've left them since then. I went back into tech. But they have the theme song for a show on Cartoon Network called Lego Ninjago. Uh, they got to go to LA for the premiere of the Ninjago movie as well. We're all still really good friends. And at the time when I was still with them, we actually won a contest as well for the Cubs. And we were the official song of the Cubs for about the last two or three years. That if anyone saw this commercial on WGN, that this is a, this was playing. And it was funny because I get to hear my roommate actually watching this commercial. I just go, this is my band. I didn't know you were such a big fan. <laughs> Right? This is what I have. It's a new dream. New dream. Change it up again. This time, I want to work with $100,000 kids. I want to I wanna get into money. I want to see what that looks like. What if I can start making that much money working on websites? And so I started building a company now. I brought in a friend that I went to college with, and we started doing what we could to make stuff work. I started learning more about business, learning more about what it took to actually do this. And at 32, I built a successful creative agency in Chicago. I had a developer, I had a designer, I had all this going, so I rebranded. And I didn't like the telegraphics name anymore. I wanted something that I thought sounded, just sounded cooler, something that sounded a little more creative. And so I picked the coolest thing I could think to name my company. I just, I used my last name. It's just, it's just me, it's just me, that's all it is. And through this, launching creative agency, it's now when things start to pick up a little bit, and we got the chance to start working with some really big clients. And we got to do stuff at McDonald's, we got to work with Anheuser-Busch, got to work on projects for Microsoft. We had this weird little food tour in Chicago that we worked with, and then we had this big transportation company in the suburbs that we worked with as well. And I did it. It took me a while, but I achieved that dream of being able to work with $100,000 accounts. But then something happened. I hated it. I hated working with $100,000 accounts. They're, they're picky about every little detail. The contracts are absolutely gigantic, and I just sit there and read 30-page contracts before I can sign off to work with this. Everything that I thought I wanted in this dream was actually real, real crap. And at one day, I found myself going into my office, sitting there, and realizing I hated my job. I made this. I created this company, and I was sitting there hating what I was doing. And I realized that I failed. That, again, this just kept happening over and over again. Just keep failing. But at the same time when I realized this, something else amazing happened. Do you guys remember this company? Yeah. Remember a few of us with the stock options. So when I got fired, I lost my stock options. And it was around this time when my company was growing that Field Glass then became the first privately held tech company in Chicago to sell for a 
billion dollars. The percentage that I would have had is somewhere around $600,000 is what I would have made off of this if I hadn't messed up and gotten fired. But as I saw that, I took a look at myself in the mirror and realized, yeah, Jeff, you're a failure. You, yes, yes. yes, you failed again. Congratulations. Pick myself up again. Took that idea of, hey, I woke up here. What, what do I have? What's available? today that I can start doing. What, what do I know? What connections do I have? How do I turn this around from things being so crappy? And I had this, this weird little food tour that we worked with. And for the past few years, the guy who ran this company was building himself up more and more. And weird industry food tours, in case you haven't heard of it, it's these companies that take you around to five or six different restaurants and you get to try the best food at all these restaurants. And it's just set up for you. And they just take you and they say, hey, come here, eat this, it's delicious. By the way, here's the chef, he'll tell you about how he made it. Oh, then come here, eat this, also delicious. Hell of an industry, amazing industry to be a part of. And as this guy was growing things, he ended up creating a company called Food Tour Pros. And this was kind of inspirational, that this client that I was working with was out there kind of chasing his own dream and doing the things he wanted to do. So, I changed my dream, my new dream. I want to be able to work on my own ideas. I was done working for the man. I don't want to work for anyone else. I want to be able to create my own stuff. And so I took 10 years of clients and I kept two employees with me. And I ended up changing things. I let go of all my clients, kept my employees, and from what I had as a creative agency, I took a gamble that what if instead of creating a bunch of different websites for different people, what if I just created one website for one type of person? And that was it. What if I could get that niche with it and really make something of it? And so I took a gamble and tried two or an event website. I'm real bad with names as well, in case you guys couldn't tell. <laughs> Use my own name, this one real blatant. And what we did was we created a prepackaged website specifically for tours and said, here, use this. Use this, forget Squarespace, forget WordPress. We got your back, just use our website. And I changed my dream again. And now the dream was I wanted to be able to travel. I wanted to see new places. I wanted to, to go around and experience all these tours around the world. And at 35, I made this move with a friend from East Leiden and my buddy from college. We gambled. We had six months of runway six months to make this thing a reality to see if we can actually make this before we ran out of money and we needed to go find new jobs. And we had problems. Uh, we launched too late. Turns out no one wants to work on their website in the middle of their tour season. Go figure. Had no clue. Uh, we also missed out on that and the money was continuing to just pile up. And this, this was looming over me yet again. Of was I really about to mess up after this huge gamble one more time? So I changed my dream. Just survive the next six months. <laughs> this is all I wanted. Just, just let me get through this and maybe things will be okay if we can just keep this going and keep this together. That I promised these friends that I would work with this really great future, this really great company, and I wanted to deliver that. And so I started seeing what could I do? What do I have? What can I do? And there was a company in Canada called Easy Ticks, and they sold tickets for tours. So I hit them up. Easy Ticks, you guys sell tickets? Aren't you gonna sell more tickets if everyone has great looking websites? And they said yes. They said yeah. I mean, I agree with them, that made a lot of sense, but they said yes. And so, from what I launched in October 2016 as tour and event websites, became Easy Sites. And this dream was achieved. Is now I have to start traveling and seeing new places. And today, you were looking at, up here on stage, the world's only digital marketing consultant for food tours. <laughs> I'm the only one, that's it. I want you guys to keep in mind. I'm gonna get sentimental here for a second.
this job doesn't actually exist in the world. <laughs> this isn't a real thing. I made it one. I just created it. And I know that we always hear those kind of lame ideas, especially when you're growing up, of like, oh, you dear, oh, you sweet things. You can be anything you want to be. No, it's true. It's true. <laughs> anything. Like that. Anything. Just dream it. Whatever you want to do. Yeah. I didn't know this was possible. The dreams have not stopped. Because now I'm going to go back to some of those other dreams. Like this one. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to work all the time. It's as simple as that. And that's what I'm working on now. And this is, this is how we get from, from working in websites that what started off with a band and that turned into picking up trash. One more time. Yeah, right? Awful. Awful. That was 10 seconds of picking up trash. This was a half hour every morning. But from there, to working at ASA, to the, we're going to the Art Institute, to building a company, to changing that company, to taking a gamble, to having it acquired. I still haven't stopped. Now the dream's to build bigger things. And it's the culmination of everything. I look back on this time when I got busted working on my website just trying to put in new shows. I just wanted to let people know when we were going to be playing a show and where we were going to be playing it. And the fact that it's 2019 and I can't do a search for hashtag karaoke kills me. And that if I wanted people to even see where I'm playing today, I still, I still do a little bit of shows. I do mostly hip hop on acoustic these days. I don't have a full band, but it's just me. It's still kind of fun. But how do I, how do I let someone know? How do I let them know when I'm playing and where I'm playing? It's weird that this has it. Facebook, Instagram, post them on Instagram. Those aren't the right places. Instagram's for photos. Facebook is for, I don't know, no one knows what Facebook is for. <laughs> I'm not gonna, Twitter? But then what, you're seeing my show in a list full of tweets with everything else? MySpace, retweets? <laughs> create a shared Google Calendar and say, hey everyone, subscribe to this. But no one even knows how to use shared calendars. So I want to change it. I want to change it. I want to create essentially Twitter, but for following events. And that dream is for people to be able to walk off stage someday saying, hey guys, thanks for listening to my music. Thanks for watching me perform comedy. You can follow my cue. And this year, this app is actually going to be released. It's getting built right now, overseeing every part of it, and the idea is that even Garen would be able to have the list of what it looked like today with the assembly in a queue that everyone could follow to know what time you need to be where. I think it's big. I love this idea, I love this concept. I've been chasing it down for six years. And the dream is to make it big. I, I, I want this to be as big as Facebook or Twitter. I want people to know more about what's happening in the real world. Is that I know that especially with kids, we yell at them all the time for being on their devices. We know we hate them on the devices all the time. If you have a bunch of devices in your home, you're sitting around thinking, I'm gonna get cancer. <laughs> like, we wanna get out. We want to be in the real world a little bit. Let's, let's go out there and actually do some stuff. And that's what I hope that my app helps you do. Because I think it's about these experiences. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna share with you guys something that was shared with me once. And it's this idea of the definition of hell. And the definition of hell, as I read it, is that your last day on this planet, the person you became will meet the person you could have become. And I'm gonna be the best version of that person. I'm gonna be on this side of it. I'm not going to be on that side looking, saying, I could have done more, or what could I have done? I'm not going to meet that hell. I'm going to meet the one who didn't actually have those dreams. And for you guys, you get to write your future. You still have this opportunity. Listen.
it's incredible, it's a messed up world. We even talked about how many times you're gonna fail and how many times it's gonna get messed up. And I think it's that idea of waking up and saying, what do I have? What's available to me? Thank you guys for listening, I really appreciate it.